Dr. Limbun King, you are charged with treason against His Britannic Majesty during the recent war. You are charged with collaboration with the enemy and assisting them in the oppression of the people of Singapore. I deny the charges. Do you hear what they are saying on the streets of Singapore? My people have turned against me. Who are your people? I am a subject of the British Empire. I'm a son of the Chinese race. I'm a straight Chinese of Singapore. I have served my people all my days. I have kept faith with them. My whole life must be the answer to those charges. Liar! Traitor! Evil! Treason! Treason. Renegade! You have always, always been, been a troublemaker! troublemaker. Disrupting I want to make the world better for our people. You betrayed everyone you've ever loved. loved! What happened to my life? What happened to my dreams? Congratulations, uh, Mr. Legislative Councillor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our new representative to the Legislative Chamber. <laughs> thank you, thank you, my friends, for nominating me. I hope to deserve the trust you placed in me. <laughs> you are the best man for the job. Good that we have our own nominated member on the council. <laughs> Someone who can talk very well to the Orang Putih. That's right. <laughs> Someone to speak up for the Babas of Singapore. My special thanks must go to my good friend, Song Ong Xiang, oh. who did everything to promote my appointment. Even though the governor suspected me of anti-colonial agitation. Ah oh, well, <laughs> have to support the old school tie of Rappos Institution. Keep it light, old boy. Nothing controversial. It will be my honor and privilege to support the interests of my people, the Barbers, the mm. straight Chinese of Singapore. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Although we Barbers form the greatest part of the population, I must not forget those who are fewer in number, yet equally important as members of the Universal Brotherhood of Man. Mm. In my purview must be the indigenous Malays, the astute merchants from Bombay, Java, and all of Asia. And of course, our blood brothers, the Chinese merchants and laborers who now enter Singapore in great numbers. <coughs> as for our barbers, I shall strive with all my might to improve their condition. <laughs> and on such topics as uh, cutting off the antiquated pigtail or toe charm, Don't mention it. Seizing to bind the feet of our little girls. Now, now I will idiots. say nothing at this time. Chilakalu. <laughs> 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 Do raise a glass with me. I want to thank all of you once more, my friends, for nominating me as your representative. So do raise a glass while I say, Banya, Banya, terima kasih. Namsya, mkoi, xie xie ni. Arigato gozaimasu. Grazi, danke shon. Merci beaucoup. Ah, apa tu? Merci beaucoup. He means thank you in the French language. I say, merci beaucoup. And in our native Hokkien tongue, it reminds us that death is not far from us every day. <laughs> Don't worry. Jangan ambil berat. Death is always near us. 
And so, carpe diem, seize the day, rejoice, and be glad for the life that we have. <laughs> Let's drink and give thanks. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Love and life, the light of heart. For you know there is no use in regretting. You have to smile a little while, and our troubles will be troubling you. He is detained at his law office. He asked me to invite you all to make yourselves at home. Uh, Come, have some makan kecil. Great I still say he's too young for the job. Only 26. Boy, sai la. How can you have a whippersnapper like that making laws, telling people what to do? And his family is poor. He has no money except for what he earns as a doctor. Now, I don't say that a poor man cannot be respected by society. Mm -hmm. But he will be tempted by the offer of money will easily fall into corruption. Mm. Yeah, he's just a young upstart, eh? <laughs> Mr. Chang Hong Lim, we are so grateful for the help you gave my grandson, my Juju. I knew his father and grandfather. They worked in my opium business. Ah, but when his father died, we did not know what to do. I told Boon Kang, we have no more money. Kring Krong Tang, you have to leave the school. I will make my Nyonya Kwe. I told him, he must take onto the street to sell. He was a good boy. He started selling. But Kasian, Kasian, he was so sad to leave the school. The headmaster, Mr. Hallett, came to me. The boy is very smart, he said. Can you pay his school fees? I was glad to do so as an old family friend. I was happy to help him. We thank you. Thank you so much. And my Juju really bato bande. He won uh, the, the Queen Scholarship and they sent him to Edinburgh to learn to be a doctor. I am proud that my investment in him has been well repaid. You would think that in Britain he'd learn to appreciate the language of Shakespeare. Instead, he comes back wanting to study Chinese, the language of Peking. What's worse, he expects us barbers to learn Mandarin. Oh. Uh, he has some weird ideas, huh? Uh, and he also says, he says that the uh, uh, China market is huge and we should try expanding to it. Not practical, huh? He even suggested teaching Mandarin to school children. Manabole, a child's brain is so small. How can he absorb two or three languages, huh? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Did you have to air your provocative ideas now? Did you see the looks on their faces? You've always delighted in upsetting people ever since <laughs> our school days when you released a lively frog in Mr. Hullard's class. You laughed as much as the rest of us uh. and you didn't bawak mulut even though you were the <laughs> class monitor. Of course, I couldn't give you away. <laughs> now, my dear chap, there's a girl that I want you to meet. Hmm. She is visiting my mother. Her father is Wong Nai Xiong, the well-known Methodist pastor and China reformist. Wong Nai Xiong? I know his fame. He is looking for a husband for his daughter. Lovely girl, but he has a great problem. He has educated her so well in both Chinese and English that all the men are scared of her. <laughs> but someone like you, a doctor, 
and a member of the Legislative Council, he'd be absolutely delighted to catch you as son-in-law. Oh, <laughs> Miss Wong, let oh. me introduce Dr. Lim Boon King. <clears throat> Madam, pleased to meet you. Delighted, sir. Uh, uh, is this your first visit to Singapore? <clears throat> I passed this way last year on my return from America. And how do you like our town? A fine modern city, most admirable. But I regret, Mr. Song, huh? that the strange Chinese, the barbers as you call them, are rather backward in their ways and customs. That's what I've been telling them. <laughs> how so, Miss Wong? Positively medieval, sir. <laughs> For example, they follow the antiquated custom of matchmaking and unwarranted interference in the choice men and women mm. should make for themselves. <laughs> Bear up, old fellow. Ah. I'm sure Miss Wong was not making personal reference to anyone here. Oh, no. Of course not. I've also noticed that the barbers subjugate their women, confine them to the domestic sphere, and refuse to educate them. All too true, I fear. <clears throat> Ong Xiang and I would like to alter this. Would you indeed? Mm -hmm. From what I have seen, Dr. Lin, with no personal reference intended, I would not enter into marriage with any barber. Oh, that's most unfortunate. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, mm, nevertheless, Miss Wong, perhaps you would like to take a little walk with me sometime? <laughs> beside the <coughs> Singapore River? <laughs> that your position is somewhat similar to an American congressman. That's most impressive. <laughs> what laws do you mean to pass? That's not entirely up to me. The other members of the council are officers of the colonial government mm. or important Europeans. They take my advice on matters of public health, such as uh, measures against the spread of cholera. On other matter, they ignore me. On opium addiction or on education. I had proposed that schools should educate all Asian children in our own languages, as well as English, but they will not hear of it. I learned Neither the languages government as nor as the people take an interest in educating girls. Yet, the uh, failure to educate our women is the deadliest, most debilitating disease of our whole community, one which threatens the very survival of the Baba race. Does it really? How can I... a nation survive when half its members are kept in darkest ignorance? Mm. How can the Babas uh, regain moral strength? when the mothers who should nurture the next generation know nothing but trivialities and idle gossip. Mm, so the men me, grow up in shallowness of heart and mind. Girls must be set free from mental darkness. They must be allowed to uh, learn as much as the boys. Mm, the education me, of girls is the only remedy, the only hope for the survival of the Baba into the new age. I do agree with you, Dr. Lin. Really. You needn't harangue me, you know. As though I were the entire legislative council. <laughs> I am so sorry. I, I forget myself sometimes. Oh. You're quite right about educating girls. I grew up in China, but my papa had me study and read and travel. I know how fortunate I am. I was a poor boy playing beside the Singapore River. My father died because of a small cut from a razor. The wound became infected and could not be cured. Then I resolved to become a doctor. When I went to Edinburgh, I realized that my homeland was so backward, so benighted. But education transformed my destiny. It seems as though I owe a duty to those other boys who will never have such a chance. You understand? I know what you mean. I myself, I'm a thousand times luckier than most other girls. I'd like to help them. My people, uh, the straight Chinese, they, they need to modernize their ways. And China itself, it is a great civilization, yet still so backward, so much needing reform. I understand the need of China. I want to use all I've learned to enlighten my people. Once I stood 
in a sunless place without a hope for the day. Love set me free. There's a debt I owe to show others the way. In the dark, many children stray. In ignorance, they grow old. I want to bring morning to their lives. I want to change the world. Let me bring knowledge to children who are lost. Let me bring them out of night. Give them wisdom, give them hope. Let me bring the light. People stumble and people sleep. They slumber, they're left far behind. Grandson, you still really want to marry that <laughs> China girl? Sudah tentu I will marry Margaret. I already asked her father's permission. The matchmaker can find so many pretty nyonyas. Should be good enough for you. No matchmaker. <laughs> and why do you refuse to have a proper baba wedding? Must have 12 days of ceremony <laughs> and a little boy must roll across the bridal bed <laughs> to be sure get male grandchildren. Let's do away with all this old rituals and superstitions. That girl reads books. Yes, English and Chinese both. <laughs> she encourages your crazy ideas. People are saying that we did not bring you up well. Kurang hajalu. People are saying that you are turning away from the babas and the nyonyas. Kacang, lupa, palga. Mama, what matters is that we truly love each other. <laughs> so you spoke to my father. Mm -hmm. What did he say? He said it's difficult for him to give away his beloved daughter to another man. That I must promise to take good care of you. Of course I will. Did he smile at all? Just a little. The truth is, he is delighted with you. <laughs> then he asked me whether I would like to publish a newspaper with him. The newspaper? It's That's a wonderful. newspaper that tells people about the movement for Chinese reform. The young emperor in Peking wants to modernize the nation, but his aunt, the old empress dowager, refuses it. What China needs is a democratic constitution, one which puts a framework of law around the emperor's power. I know all this. Early this year, we advocates of reform launched a petition to present to the emperor to call for a constitution for China. We are gathering hundreds, thousands of signatures for the petition among Chinese everywhere, from Japan and Java, Malaya and Singapore. When we present the petition in Peking, even the empress dowager will realize that the emperor must heed the will of the people, that this is the mandate of heaven. Vox populi, vox dei. Boon King. I know all this. My father has told me. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, too, want to see the modernization of China. With an end to old beliefs and superstitions. With full rights for all men and women. The newspaper will be a splendid vehicle to spread the ideas of reform to Chinese everywhere. <laughs> I want to help with it. Yes, indeed. I will need your help. <gasps> My own written Chinese is hardly sufficient. I would rely on you. Very much. Every day. This is so <laughs> exciting. 
I will be a proper newspaper woman. Yes. <laughs> will you give me a salary? A, a salary? Why not? You must give me a real job as a journalist. <laughs> People would think I am not able to support you properly. Why shouldn't I contribute to our family's income? Income? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think the newspaper can afford to pay you. Oh well, I will work for nothing. I will go to the office every day with my sleeves rolled up, wearing a green eye shade. You can't work in the newspaper office. Why not? You don't want me to do this job. The office is a rough and dirty place. It's not suitable for you. <laughs> do you think I'm one of your even yonyas? <laughs> Only fit to sit at home and sew beads on slippers? <laughs> no way. I want to do something meaningful with my life. I want to achieve something of value to the world. You are standing in my way. No, <laughs> no, no, no. You no. want me to blush unseen and simply waste away. You, you, Baba. Margaret. We are going to have children in the future, aren't we? Yes. Lots of babies. So you would want to look after them, wouldn't you? Yes. We'll have servants and nursemaids, of course, but for little children, their own mother's loving care is best. Yes, all right. <laughs> I will work on the newspaper. At home. <laughs> That's splendid! I will give you all the writing and translation you can handle. I don't know why I agreed to marry you. What? You're still full of those old-fashioned ideas. Oh, come on. <laughs> Half the town is there! Eh, eh, what's the bride wearing? Will she be wearing a white gown? White gown? Choi la choi! No, it's a Chinese costume! From, From Shanghai! Tengok tu, that's the girl's father there! The Methodist pastor! I hear he wants to found a colony in Sarawak for his full child Methodist! There's the groom, looking so nervous! Ong Xiang is supporting him! 
good suits from Shanghai? No, no. from London. Several row, of course. <laughs> Look, the pastor is praying. Oh, there's a tear in his eye. Lucky girl, caught herself a smart young doctor. Eh, hey, isn't all that well off, they say? Hope he earns enough to give us a good dinner. His grandmother is a fine cook. She said it is a good nyonya dinner. Babi pongte, duck soup, and eat it tea. Ayam buah keluak. And ikan sama sambal belacan. Oi! Here we come! It wasn't that easy to reform China, was it? For years, you reformists slowly worked for political change. While Dr. Sun Yat-sen called for violent revolution. And his rebels fought the imperial troops. I battled Sun Yat-sen in public talks and in articles in our newspaper. He wants violent revolution to change China? If the roof of your house leaks, do you burn down the whole house or work to mend the house? Then the young emperor suddenly died. And the dowager empress died. Everything was upset. The emperor died. And in those years, Margaret died. But, but you, you didn't, didn't give, give up, up your obsession, obsession with China. China. I was restless. I kept myself busy. Perhaps a way to forget. I had my usual work in Singapore and I still work for Chinese reform. Traveling and meeting people. Your second wife wasn't happy about that. Grace. Yes. Grace wasn't happy. Hey, Boon King, you married again. Three years after Margaret died. Yeah, another China girl. Why cannot marry a nice nunya? So you found a lively young woman, 20 years younger than yourself. Gata <laughs> lalu. <laughs> Lucky la that Grace got herself a rich husband with a fine house on Emerald Hill with gardens and stables and lots of servants. <laughs> Home ya lalu. Hun Kang, may I disturb your thoughts a while? Oh, sorry. Uh, Grace, uh, what is your question? Uh, you bid me pack your travel bags for two months' absence. You haven't told me where you're going, or when you will return. I cannot tell you. You never tell me anything. I know you are a busy and important man. Your mind is fixed off far off noble goals. You are president of a dozen societies. Every night you have meetings and dinners. But you are seldom home, and you don't speak to me. I still have hope for a new China. I see a vision of an enlightened emperor presiding over a parliamentary democracy. Now, for this, we must get a legal constitution, having voting rights for everyone. I understand. A young things. child now sits on the imperial throne. Government and policy are in the hands of rival factions, uh, maneuvering for power. But there are still ministers who believe in legal change. Now, if this faction comes to power, it is still possible for China to be reformed. Yes, Bun King. You know this, don't you? Grace, you, you were born in Amoy. I grew up in these tumultuous years. I understand your concerns. But when you travel, I'm left alone. People ask when you will return. I cannot answer. I feel a fool. I will tell you now what no one else must know. I travel secretly to meet progressive ministers in Peking. I assure them they can find support in the Nanyang. You're making enemies at court. You risk your life. Those ministers will murder common people who oppose them. I can't refrain. Years ago, they sent assassins to Singapore to murder Sun Yat-sen. I know. I helped him to escape. You helped him to escape? <sighs> what will happen to the children and I if they have murdered you? Sun Yat-sen has driven China into chaos as his rebel forces wage war on Peking's army. It hurts my heart. To see the country torn apart. These are the last days, Grace, as, as the waters rise to seek a lawful change in government. Do not dissuade me. So, Hun King, that's the end of your hopes for Chinese reform. You wanted China to have a kindly monarch and an elected parliament. 
Now the last imperial dynasty has fallen. The Republic has been proclaimed. And all you did has become irrelevant. Your articles and lectures and journeys, they were all in vain. So, the old empire of China has fallen. The palaces are burning. The books are burning. Lost the beauty and the wisdom. Lost the heritage of 3,000 years. This new republic, born out of bloodshed and destruction, from such beginnings, how can peace and stability grow? What will become of China in the years to come? All your life, mm. you've lectured and scolded the Babas and Nonyas, mm. demanding that we change our traditional customs. You I want to shorten the period of funerals, less than the full 15 days. Mm. You want to change our wedding customs, no 12 days of ceremonies, no big feasts. You, you are attacking the very roots of our family tradition and filial practices. You want to change the way we bring up our daughters. Stop footballing, let them run about, let them go to school. Stop bowling. Outside the home, they will be exposed to immoral influence. Your girls will not be in any danger. We only want the best for our girls. We know the barbers do not like to send your children to uh, missionary schools. Mm. So we propose to start a new school. A school for our girls. Mm -hmm. A Chinese girls school. A school for girls? <laughs> <laughs> our daughter is meant for getting married. And you get girls. Would you put wheels on the kitchen sink? A woman is meant for having babies. You expect them to study. Mm. Would you ask a cow to dance? Uh, would you ask a fish to sing? <laughs> would you ask a frog to fly? Ask a girl to get educated. What a silly reply. <laughs> A woman who reads a book sure cannot learn how to cook. Mm. Read too much, eyes get red. Huh? Too much learning, bed in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Running about is a disgrace. In the house is woman's place. Emily. What you propose will destroy our family. Mm. No, no, please, let me try to persuade you. My dear Nonias and Babas, you have nothing to fear for modernity. In Western countries, <sighs> women in the higher society are educated. That may be fine for white women. Mm. Our Chinese women are more delicate. Mm. Mm. Hello. Hello. It is not for us. Um. Let me introduce you to my wife, Margaret. Your wife? China girl! She is woman! I'm sure you know Margaret is the daughter of the respected pastor, Reverend Wong Nai Xiong. The pastor's daughter? My dear Baba Senyonyas. I am honored to be among you. My father has urged me to seek out the best society in Singapore so that I can learn and benefit from knowing you. My dear father has taught me English letters so that I can read the Holy Bible. He has also taught me to read the Confucian classics so that I could understand my duties as a filial daughter in youth and now as a good wife. Well, that's good then. We entreat you, we implore you, give, give them, them a school. school. Here's a proposal for Babas and Nonyas. Start up a school where our daughters will shine. Let them glow, just see them grow. Light our children's young lives. Yeah.
Like all the marriages I've ever seen. I told your brother, my partner at the clinic, that I needed to find a wife, a consort, to stand by my side and run my household. He said that you, his sister, had just left school in Amoy. You might suit. I told my brother I was agreeable. Since I married you, I run the house, control the servants. Have I done well? Uh, yes, yes. You have done well. I fill my days with useful work. I have my charities and my social causes. As Mrs. Limbun King, I have the influence of your name supporting me. And I entertain the constant flow of people who come every day seeking your help and advice. Am I doing all that you want your wife to do? Oh, yes, uh, certainly, of course. Grace, you are doing very well. Do keep on with it. I know that a couple comes to an arranged marriage without knowing each other, but with full intention to stay together a lifetime. And as years go by and they share their lives and their thoughts, love grows between them. An affection, a fondness, but this hasn't happened in our marriage yet, Boon King. You're kind to me, yet never truly open, truly warm. Sometimes I think the barriers in your heart, in your mind. What have I done that keeps you far from me? so hard. I shouldn't have let you work in the school. Dear man, you didn't let me do anything. It was my own choice to work in the school and on the newspaper. Margaret, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I can't 
can't save you. Don't be silly. I've heard the other doctors say they don't know any cure for consumption. <coughs> but Kay, when I'm gone, you must carry on with your life. You must marry again. Never. You will need a wife to look after you and the children. Console yourself. I want you to be happy again. I will go. Don't go. Don't leave. Forty tables, haven't we? Uh, the members should be arriving soon. <laughs> Where's Grace? Is she coming? Yes, she will be arriving soon to grace the occasion. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, you will be doing the opening speech, won't you? Yes. You know, I've been asked to write a book to commemorate the centenary on the history of the Chinese in Singapore. Mm. So, I'll just mention some things from the book and I'll also mention your OBE. Ah, must do, <laughs> really. We're all tremendously proud of your award, you know. Uh, what are we having for dinner? Ah, Rappos Hotel is catering an excellent English dinner, they told me. Mm. Let's have a look at the menu. Roast beef. Mm. Boiled potatoes. <laughs> Green peas and carrots. <laughs> ah, pretty blend. Yeah. That's the dub. Like. British cooking is like that. 
do you remember when we took the volunteers to London and they complained about the food? Mm. But I had a jar of my sister's sambal blachan to spice up the meals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we even toasted blachan over fire in our room at the Ritz. And then the neighbours came yeah. complaining about the smell. God bless us, has something died in here? <laughs> <laughs> it helped us survive the British meals. Do get me uh, some of your sister's uh, sambal blachan. Mm. Uh, Grace. Grace uh, doesn't like it. She's from Amoy, nah. Yes, of course. Excuse me. Something I must attend to. Oh, go, 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 go. Uh, gentlemen! Come, 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 come. Boon King's over there. Go say hi to him. Hey, hello. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Hey, hello. Hey, hello. Hey, looking good. Welcome. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Hey, can you tell us, uh, got any more good tips for us? Uh? Hey, tell us, what new crop should we plant next? Mm. Rubber market, very high. Hey, this barber advised Tan Chi Yen to plant rubber. At that time, no one knew. Uh, no one knew that it was good. Apa itu? Rubber, rubber. Chi Yen plant land up in Melaka. Then several of us joined with you, Baba Lim, to make a big plantation in Sembawang. Huh? Oh, just when the trees mature, the demand from America went up sky high! All Americans were buying Henry Ford's new car! Each car got more rubber tires! Ah. Hey, we had a huge rubber boom! Hey, boom time for everyone, okay? Milling la, shipping la, railway. Everyone was making money. Mm. Ah. Hey, you pun dapat banyak duit kan? <laughs> you are a real magician, Babalim. Mm. You can read the future. No, no, no. No, 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 look, I, I, I just happen to have a little bit of uh, foresight. Oh, Even so though uh, I do wear the spectacles. Baba <laughs> Lim! <laughs> 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 then you said we needed better protection for the local economy, eh? Huh? Rubber. <laughs> <laughs> and you started an insurance company. I took some shares. From Overseas Assurance Corporation, me to big financial dealing. Yes, you stepped into the financial world and you founded the Chinese Commercial Bank. And the other Ho bank called... Hong Bank. Just recently, the big local banks needed to talk to each other to cooperate. Yes, they have faith in you, uh, Baba Lim. You were the trusted broker. You got them to sit down with each other, Bagus. And became the president of the Overseas, Overseas Chinese, Chinese Bank. bank. Uh, gentlemen, dinner will be served soon. Uh, Ong <laughs> 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 Xiang, what's this? Good evening, Mrs. Lim. There's Rex. a jar of it at every table. Uh, it's the one. smelly <laughs> stuff you like. <laughs> Samba Blachan. I thought some of the barbas might like to have it as a condiment for their roast beef. Roast beef with samba blachan. Splendid idea. <laughs> My friends, ladies and gentlemen of the Straits Chinese British Association, known as in barbas, welcome to our centenary celebration dinner. <laughs> now, we'd like to start the evening by offering our heartiest congratulations to our distinguished friend, Dr. Lim, on having been awarded the Order of the British Empire for his long service in the Legislative Council and for his fundraising work during the war. Dr. Lim Boon King. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, regarding my contributions to the war effort, I only did my duty. Not much more than was done by so many of you. Huh? I mean, a large sum for the British Red Cross was raised by volunteers from all our communities. Mm -hmm. So all of you actually did more than me, right? <laughs> so I was rather reluctant to accept this award of the, the, the OBE. <laughs> I even told the governor, he ought to give a medal to each and every one of you. Oh. <laughs> oh. So let us salute and congratulate each other. Yeah. Huh? No, no, no. This Baba and I helped to found this association almost 20 years ago. Our greatest achievement has been the magnificent response of this colony to come to the help of the motherland. We absorb the best things from the Western civilization and we add to them our own unique style. Mm. Our special flavor. Uh, <laughs> our summer blachan! <laughs> <laughs>
silly rumor outside that you're trying to sell your house. Perfectly true. I'm selling Claire Grove. I'm going to China, dear chap. <laughs> you're going to China? Tan Kaki has invited me to become president of his university in Xiamen. Yeah. So I must live there, of course. <laughs> oh, Grace is delighted. Her family home is there. <laughs> you put up your house for sale and you didn't even tell me you were going. <laughs> Tremendously sorry, Ong Xiang, but it's all been such a rush. I have to be there immediately, within the month. Uh, you know, I, I, the campus is just a bare site. I have to uh, put up buildings, engage staff. What about your ties with the banks, the rubber plantations? What about the Chinese girls' school? It's flourishing now. Flourishing? It's a constant battle for money. The parents take the girls away at 11 years old to prepare for marriage. You will take good care of it, old oh, boy. Oh, don't leave the work to me. I know I can rely on you. At our age, we should be contemplating our retirement. But off you go on a new adventure, impulsive <laughs> as ever. Ong Xia, you have to understand. Tan Kaki has given me the chance to fulfill everything I wanted to do, to develop the ideal education for modern China. All I understand is that you're turning your back on Britain. <laughs> After all the opportunities it has given you, Boon King, where is your loyalty? Don't say I'm disloyal. Britain gave us the world's best education. Now, I'm just bringing that education back to our motherland. Motherland? Do you mean you're no longer a uh, switch Chinese? Is China not your motherland? You can't deny that your forebearers' blood and bones were bred in China. We put our roots down here. I am a native of this soil. True Peranakan. <laughs> you used to be so passionate about improving the Babas, but now you seem to forget your home in Singapore. I will never forget the land of my birth. Are you loyal to China or to the British Empire? Do you think my heart is too small to encompass more than one loyalty? I don't know what you are. Are you calling me a turncoat? A traitor? Sometimes that's how it looks. You don't understand me. Who knows what you're really trying to do? You'll know when I've made Amoy University the best in all of Asia. Is this how we're parting? Are you just going away, my dearest friend? We were close as brothers, sharing our hopes and our dreams, one mind and intent. I'm losing you, you've changed your mind. Feels like I'm left behind I don't want to say goodbye Perhaps you try Just don't let it die You still recall All the dreams we shared We'd be warriors right out into the world The boy I knew Has gone away Has to say I'm beating farewell I'm losing my friend If I have to lose you Part of my soul will be gone with you is so hard to do I won't say goodbye on this island near Xiamen City. My parents' house is a few steps away. My mother looked forward to seeing me every day and the grandchildren. I'm happy that you will be uh, happy here, Grace. All the furniture has arrived from Singapore. I've engaged a new nanny for the children and, I, and I've engaged a new cook. <laughs> you can have a good dinner tonight. I told all the cook your favorite dishes 
And you can have your sambal belacan. <laughs> That's pleasing. <laughs> I have been uh, staying in rented quarters and I dine with university staff. <laughs> well, those who are willing to dine with me. What do you mean? I'm afraid some of the staff are hostile to me. Some of the old scholars look down on me and because I haven't passed the classical examinations and my command of the literary language isn't up to their standard. Oh dear. The English-speaking Baba, they call me. <laughs> and the younger men violently oppose the idea of Confucian studies. I explained to them, we must have the moral weight of Confucian education as well as Western science if our students are to be men and women of upright character. Do they quarrel with you? They argue and refuse to cooperate. But uh, the professors whom we recruited from America, they are all right. Hun King, do you think it will help if we cultivated those professors who admired you, entertained them and introduced them to social life? Social life? You know, there are many rich and cultivated people here on this island of Kulangyu. Ambassadors, intellectuals, wealthy foreigners, my parents know everybody. We could arrange to invite your staff to elegant parties, piano recitals and soirees. Do you think that will help? Perhaps that will warm the atmosphere. As president of the university, it is the, the kind of thing that I should organize. Or rather, you, as Mrs. President, can help me organize. Hmm? <laughs> I'll speak to my mother at once. <laughs> Thank you. It's a splendid idea. <laughs> uh, Grace, there is another thing you can do for me. I have a great undertaking in mind. I will translate the great Chinese poem, the Lisa of Qian, into English. This book will be a shining example of Amor University's mission to blend Western science with ancient Chinese wisdom. Boon King, how can I help? I will need your help to uh, compile a glossary of words. Do you think uh, you can do that? Yes. Yes, I shall be glad to help. in Singapore last week. What? Old Boon Keng? Is he still alive? Still at Amo University? Huh? It's been more than 15 years. He was here on a fun collecting trip, taking his party around Java, Malaya, all the places he used to have friends. With the begging bowl, outstretched in his hands. I thought Tan Kaki was supporting the university. Kaki couldn't hand up in the depression. I know, we all suffer. To raise money for the university. Oh, Lian, no, this is the third time he has been out here fundraising. Yes, it is very successful. He gives his inspiring speech, and people believe that Amoy University is worth supporting, and they reach for their wallets. No joke, at his age, traveling all over. How do we know that he's not pocketing the money for himself? You don't know Boon Keng's reputation. Dia satu satu dua dua. People have trusted him since 19 not belong. Did you hear? Mrs Lim Boon Keng is in Singapore. She's staying with her brother, Dr Yin. Doing some shopping at Robinson's while Dr Lim tours <gasps> at Java. Grace came for lunch at the Chinese Ladies Association. She used to be our treasurer, you know. So energetic, so full of ideas. A marvelous fundraiser. She must be having a good life as Mrs. President Dr. Lim Boon King. <laughs> <laughs> Boon King.
I don't want to go back to Singapore. We cannot stay here. Ban Kaki has decided to hand the university to the Chinese government. I will resign as president. You shouldn't resign. I won't work for the new management, even if they would keep me on. I'm nearly 70 years old. It's time for me to retire. And where will we live in Singapore? At least here, there's a house provided for us. We'll manage somehow. But we will be short of money. We'll have no car, no servants. So, I will have to do all the housework myself, I suppose. I always said you trusted the wrong people with your investments when you left Singapore. All your money disappeared. Bad business climate. <laughs> so they say. They themselves lost money. Do not imagine, do not suggest that my friends acted in bad faith. You never had any sense about money. Any other man working in China for 17 years, putting up buildings and managing huge staff would have enriched himself. Only you. You go home penniless, like a beggar. Would you rather I had accepted bribes and commissions? Given up my honour? You are Limbun King. Boon King, back in Singapore at last. LD, Sir Song Ong Xiang. <laughs> well done, old boy. So, they've given you a knighthood. <laughs> You're back for good now? Yes, because of the Japanese invasion of China. Uh, bad business, that. It's outright aggression. Mm. It's intolerable. So that's why you left. So, tell me, dear chap, how did it go in Amoy all those years? Did you achieve those lofty dreams you had? <laughs> no. Can't say I did. The Chinese nationalists destroyed my reputation among the Chinese literati. You didn't tell me this in your letters. And then, Tan Kaki's money stopped coming in. I had no time for administration. I spent all my strength on fundraising. You must be wary now. So, why didn't you quit the struggle long ago? Why didn't you resign from your position? A warrior doesn't stop the fight because the battle's hard. Or if he faces long defeat. Always obstinate. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, at least lots of young men and women got a good education and went out into the world. Mm -hmm. Now I'm home. I shall lead a quiet life. You know, a few letters to the papers, a few articles. You never stop, do you? This uh, Japanese invasion of China. Uh, my heart burns against it. I must speak out. I will raise funds for the Chinese army. Uh, Grace will help. She's very good at fundraising. Now, speaking of funds, I heard you came back from Amoy in pretty bad shape financially. All my investments went in the big crash. Anything I can do to help, oh boy? No, I'm quite all right. Grace manages very well. <laughs> Someone lent us this old bungalow. Ah, in Patterson Road, yes, but we have no shortage of friends and visitors streaming in and out, as in the good old days. <laughs> I must be toddling along. <laughs> so long, as they say in America. Au revoir. Voya con Dios. Zai jian. Zai jin. Selamat jalan. Selamat tinggal, old chap. Ong Xiang has passed away. Selamat Jalan. Goodbye, old boy.
charge of treason against His Britannic Majesty during the recent war. You are charged with collaboration with the enemy and assisting them. The oppression of the people of Singapore. Shooting! Do you wish to answer the charges brought against you? I have served my people all my days. I have kept faith with them. Dr. Im Boon King, you may protest against our war in China. You are an enemy of the Japanese. <clears throat> but you are also leader of the Chinese in Shonan. Make an association of merchants. You can be the head. Tell your people they shall cooperate with Nippon Go so that Shonan shall be productive for our needs. If you choose to work with us, we shall be gentle and gracious to the people of Shonan Do. But if you choose to oppose us, our heart will be heavy with punishment and penalty. I am too old. I cannot work for you. Do not hurt my husband. He's an old man. <laughs> Mrs. Rim Boon King, I've heard of you. You helped raise money. China to fight Japan. You take outside, put it in the sun, no water, no rest. Grace, Boon King, resist. You must agree. No, I, I can't do this. Then your family shall suffer. Think carefully, Dr. Lim Boon King. I'm afraid, Shinozaki san, please help my wife. Nothing I can do. Only you can help. You must agree to cooperate. Ranch with the Japanese. Never help your wife. Help your people. Be leader of the Owashi Chinese Association. You can work with the general. Ease the demands. Have the prisoners released. Save many lives. No, I can't. You will be figurehead to Oni. I will help you. You must.
far too much help to the people of Shonanto. You will return to Tokyo at once. Hey! Your gift to the people of Japan. You will collect 50 million dollars. That's, that's impossible. There isn't that much money in all the banks. Dr. Lim, we know you were head of the Overseas Chinese Association. You are said to have extorted money from the people of Singapore for the Japanese. Let me speak on behalf of Dr. Rimbun King. Mamoru Shinozaki, the tribunal recognizes you as a Japanese civilian employed by the Japanese military authority. We know you intervened to help thousands of Singapore people. At risk to yourself, you protected them from the military police and saved their lives. His Majesty's government thanks you for your most commendable efforts. Do you speak in favor of Dr. Lim? It was I who urged Dr. Rim Bung King to be head of the Owashi Chinese Association. I worked with him. We saved many lives together. He was forced to do that work. He wanted to help his people. The military tribunal has considered all testimonies presented and is pleased to declare that Dr. Lim Bun King is found not guilty of treason and collaboration with the enemy. No! So the white people want to acquit you. We know what we saw. We saw you collecting money from us. You helped the enemy. You work with the Japanese. Visitors? No. Any telephone calls? No. They leave me alone. So, our clan association is opening up a new clubhouse. Will we be inviting Lim Boon King? No. After what he did in the war, don't invite him. Will we invite Boon King to our annual club dinner? He used to be our president. President! Now we throw him out if he showed his face here! Grace, any calls? The secretary from the Straits Chinese Association called. Some of the English educated are still with me. But most of my people shun me. Unforgiving. Booking was a big donor to our society before the war. Should we send him a card? He is absolutely broke now. Can forget about him. Are you inviting Lim Boon King to your daughter's wedding? He founded the school! That was so long ago. He changed his face since then. Nobody wants to mix with him. Tan Ka Ki tells the Chinese merchants, anyone who worked with the Japanese is a traitor. Boon King, why do you just sit there all day? Why isolate yourself? Why don't you go out and see your friends? They reject me. They are people who want to come visit, talk about China. No. You must get up. You must eat something. Leave me alone. I'll boil good herbal soup for you. Hmm? Go away. I'll take care of your food and your health, as I've done all these years. What became of all your great business enterprises? They went broke during the Depression, or they were wiped out during the war. The schools you started closed during the war. Many didn't reopen. There are no bilingual schools. You wanted to spread Confucianism among the Babas. Now even in China, no one is interested in Confucius. You worked so hard for China and the Chinese. You deserted the Babas for China. And now, it's the Chinese themselves who reject you, called you traitor. So little 
is left of all your life's work. What was your life for? Here I'm lost in a sunless place All vanity stripped away I once had dreams that were great and high They failed far from the day a difference to the world I rebelled against the dark All I did was done for love for passion of my heart Love stays undaunted Love never loses hope Love does not give up the fight I did my best How oh, I tried to bring the light So he left behind I gave my life to bring the light Chin up, old fella! Wang Xiang you don't need statues and monuments, my dear boy. Your contributions are written across the face of the economy. You laid the foundation of a civic society. You did your fair share of that. We had a good time together, didn't we? And I wrote all our deeds in my big book, so that we will be remembered as long as Singapore has books and libraries. You were a brave warrior, old boy. You fought well. I brought you some soup. You really must try to eat something. Special soup. Thank you, Grace. Bun Kang, do you know the colonial secretary has invited me to be a justice of the peace, a magistrate? That's a great honor for you. You will accept the offer, of course. It shows that the British still think well of you to offer such honor to your wife. You deserve it yourself for the social work you've done. Grace. I'm sure you can perform the duties very well. Very well. <laughs> Mrs. Lim Boon Kang, <laughs> JP. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you have two visitors. I don't want to see anyone. Uh, they both speak English. They say they're from their old school. Huh? Dr. Lim, it's an honor to meet you. Dr. Lim, what do you think of the news about the People's Republic in China? The old communist leaders intend to wipe out all of China's traditional past. The old learning will be destroyed. They will kill the landlords and the scholars. They will burn the books. Darkness will fall over the soul of China. Dr. Lim, we have an idea. We want to organize some lectures and talks in English on Chinese art and philosophy. Perhaps you would learn your name to support us. It's an excellent idea. <laughs> we should found a society. A new society? The China Society. <laughs> we have friends who will come. You will be the first president of the society, of course. One more campaign for this old warrior. <laughs> One more effort to teach my English-speaking barbers their proud heritage. Then I'll have the papers drawn up. So while the heritage of the old mother country goes up in flames, here, Far from China, in another tongue, we will preserve a remnant of the past. We will do this. Good effort. Merci beaucoup. Eh? Merci beaucoup. Not long before we die, so let us give thanks for the life that we have. 
Merci beaucoup. <rire> Merci beaucoup. <rire> One more valiant endeavor, Wen King. Perhaps the China society won't last long. What does it matter, really? You struggled bravely. That is what's important. Margaret, all my struggles achieved so little in the end. What was it all for? Stand and watch the river flowing by Current on the shadows down below See the eddies idly turn on the water side Then they ebb away, they fade and they flow All my days are repulse on the street Time goes by, the years are not my friend Now I ask, what was it for, my endeavoring? And I wonder what it means in the end Console your heart and be at rest Take it easy, just see the sunlight I try to build were futility. They were washed away like foam on the way. All that you had to give was love. Overflowing, in time to come, they will remember. You're on a shining rock. Shining like sunlight on the river